The biggest boxing upset in history. Deji is the bad guy after all. Someone tries to jump a car over a drawbridge and more. Welcome to Purgatory. How's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. I am Spike. And I'm mad. And this is the Purgatory Podcast. Today, we're super excited. We got new setups. Um, it should sound a little better. <clears throat> should sound a little better for you guys if I can talk correctly. A lot of cool news. Um, we just had a crazy boxing fight. We've got some YouTube drama. We've got some weird news. We've got the whole nine today. The whole nine. How are you doing today, Mad? I'm doing great. I just bought this new uh, microphone arm and uh, pop sleeve, and uh, I guess we're going to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, mine's, I've got one too, and I'm getting used to, like, moving the arm because it tilts the mic and stuff. Yeah. It's, but it's pretty uh, legit. Yeah, it, it, it's dope. Like, my brother saw it, he was freaking out, that. oh, I need one of these. Like, it just looks so professional, you know? I mean, yeah. it, like, it makes my room look so much cooler, I think. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, um... No, I, I I did like a little closet setup. I cleaned out some of my clothes, <laughs> and I'm sitting in my fucking closet <laughs> recording. But I think it sounds pretty good. It's, it's really like dead in here. There's no echo or anything. Yeah, I uh, so my mic to work it needs like a one of those like micro USBs, mm-hmm. and my brother was cleaning out his room, and he gave me one that's like 15 feet. So I think next podcast I'm gonna try and uh, see if I can record from my closet as well. Yeah, it's the good thing about a closet, it's so small, so it's easy to soundproof. When you're in a big open room, you have to do, like, okay, where's the sound going to bounce to, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because, like, I'm at the corner of my room, so I think if I, like, if I don't face the mic, it's going to echo, you know? So I have to have, like, my mic, my mouth right up to the mic. Yeah, I, um, you're using a USB mic. I actually got, like, an audio interface for, with an XLR mic, and my mic isn't super nice. But I got, I spent my money on the audio interface so I can always uh, upgrade the mic later to like a nicer mm-hmm. mic, you know. Oh, yeah. But, so I'm, I'm excited. It, it's, uh, we're legit now. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, this is, a, this is a, a, a great stepping stone to something better. Yeah, for sure. I've, uh, I've emailed several different influencers online. I'm hoping we get somebody on the show soon. But for now, let's talk about this fight, man. Cause, no one really cared about boxing until this. It, no one cared about boxing unless the name Mayweather was on the card, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everyone cares about boxing again when this fight happens. Like the heavyweights in the past, heavyweight championship of the world has always been like the most prestigious title, like the thing everyone talks about. You know, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. Um, it was always about the heavyweights. And the heavyweight division hasn't really been relevant for a while, you know? Yeah. And so from what I understand, this Anthony Joshua guy was going to fight a different person or something like that. And then he pulled out of the fight and Anthony Ruiz was put in, or Andy Ruiz rather. And it was, I mean, it was a really huge, um, the odds were stacked way against Mr. Ruiz, you know? Yeah. Like everyone was thinking Anthony Joshua was just going to get in and trounce this dude. And in the third round, Anthony Joshua lands a left and knocks the shit out of Andy Ruiz, knocks him down. And I'm everyone's thinking it's over. You know, this guy's going to finish it. And then Andy yeah. Ruiz, Andy Ruiz gets up and like 30 seconds later, knocks down Anthony Joshua and then the fight was all Andy Ruiz after that. Yeah. It was uh, it was dope just because uh, he gets knocked down and everyone's like, yeah, what did you expect? And then like he gets back up and just has this like gusto of energy, and just unloads on this guy. Just beats the brakes off this dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, and his punches weren't even like real clean connections, you know? Yeah. It, he was just like hammer fisting this dude. Like he was punching him in the back of the head. He was pushing him. He was like schoolyard brawling with this fucking guy. I oh, yeah. I was like, oh man, this is crazy. Really entertaining fight to watch, as opposed to watching someone like Mayweather, where there's probably not going to be a knockdown in the whole fight. Yeah. Like this was a uh, five knockdowns in one fight. It was 
it was like a really good fight to watch. Like I, I, uh, I didn't watch it when it came out, but the next day on Twitter, or I guess that night on Twitter, it was just like trending and blowing up everywhere. Um, one of the funniest things I saw, I just uh, put it in the on the Google Doc, but um, they they have these pictures of 2013, and it's like and uh, Anthony Joshua at the Olympics, and then there's one for Andy Ruiz 2013, and it says, "Me chilling after I took a shit," and it's a picture of him like on Instagram in his bathroom. <laughs> It's like hilarious, like, yeah, like it, it, it's crazy to see like these guys' uh, like size comparison. Like one guy's just like built like a Greek god, and the other guy's just like this chubby Mexican dude. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw I it's saw like the meme. biggest upset, I'd say. Yeah, for sure, it's got to be up there. I saw a meme that it was like Anthony Joshua's face, and it said, "This is gonna be a piece of cake." And then it showed Anthony Ruiz's cake, f- face, and he goes, "Somebody say cake." <laughs> oh, dude, it it was awesome. It was awesome. It like it was dope. Um, it it just falls back on that quote, like, uh, "It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog." You know, not to be too cheesy, but I mean, obviously, yeah, like Andy doesn't look like a, like he didn't look anything like Anthony, like Joshua. You know. But he still managed to, like beat this dude in like it's he's not a, a new bodybuilding show. Champion. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it's just um, you put in that video of him on pads and like it, you can just tell yeah. it's uh, where oh, it puts man. the most work in. Terrifying. <laughs> like yeah, yeah the, him hitting those pads, man. I I was telling you his coach was holding the pads and he was like Ooh! like even even yeah. like even holding the pad it was like holy shit, man. And his hands are so fast especially for someone as big as him, you know? So now they've already announced the rematch and you got to wonder maybe if Anthony Joshua just took this one a little too lightly, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Because it didn't seem like, it seemed like something was a little off with him. You know, like he, he stood up after the final knockdown and looked over to his corner and then kind of went, nah, I'm done. He, he looks like uh, he like just spent all his energy in the first few rounds. And uh, he was just gasped by the end of it. He just could not move. Like when he was falling down, he was looking up. And you can, like, if you've done sports, you know the look of like, oh, dude, like I'm, like I'm done. Like if I don't get like water soon, I'm just gonna be like, comatose. Yeah, I feel like if the third round would have been like 30 seconds longer, Andy Ruiz would have finished it in the third round. Yeah. Um, because I mean, Anthony Joshua was in big trouble in the third round, and then four, five, six went by kind of it's not super exciting within round seven is when Ruiz ended it and he was just punching 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 wild and then kind of put both of his hands on Anthony Joshua's shoulders and then like shoved him down he didn't even knock him down with a punch yeah and then Anthony Joshua kind of he, he took like a standing eight and then looked at his corner and then the ref was like you ready to box you ready and then he didn't give an answer and looked over to his coaches again. And then the ref just waved his hands and called it. So it was kind of a weird knockout. You know, I, of course I am, I'm a sports fan. I'm not necessarily a boxing fan, but the exciting knockouts where Mike Tyson hits somebody and their mouthpiece goes flying across the the ring. And then they, you know, they're out on their feet and then their head hits the, the canvas. That's the kind of knockout that is like YouTube highlight reel, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, it's you watched the fight, and it was Ruiz's fight almost the whole way. I mean, he I think he was winning by points, too, you know? Yeah. So I'm excited for the rematch. I'm like, And it's weird for me to say, because I didn't care about boxing. But I'm going to watch the rematch. I might even do, like, a pay-per-view party or something. Yeah. Because uh, they're that, just that... exciting to watch. These, both of these guys are really exciting fighters to watch. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, like... If anything, this last fight was like publicity for the, like the rematch, you know? Like, like like now everyone's gonna be watching, and I bet you everyone's gonna be like rooting for uh, Andy. Yeah, so it's I, gonna be pretty cool to see him. I looked at um, Andy's Instagram, and he he has like eight hundred thousand followers like overnight. Yeah, he just I like mean, exploded. Of I course bet. he does, you know. I mean, he's but, a champ. Why not? But that was so cool, like uh, just like the luck of it, how that one guy stepped down and how he stepped in, you know? Like uh, yeah. that's probably gonna make his career. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm sure he's a millionaire it, now. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he is. But I mean, now, I mean, now I know his name, you know, people For that sure. didn't even know he existed now know he exists. So he uh, he definitely has this uh, microphone up to his like career. And uh, it's, just, it's just his choice to uh, 
to see where it goes, I guess. Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited, and um, it's it's weird that like the biggest two boxing fights in the last couple of years were YouTubers. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I was gonna say and, like I had a uh, I had a watch party for that one. Very disappointing. Yeah. Um. And you know, you talk about heavyweights. Recent heavyweights and the Klitschko brothers were kind of the two big ones, but they're never gonna fight because they're twins. I think they're twins. Yep. They're, I know they're brothers. So you had these two guys that were top five at least in the in the heavyweight division that are never ever gonna fight because they're brothers. Now, so that's kind of weird is, for is ratings. That, is that because it's not allowed, or just because they don't want to? They don't want to. Gotcha. It would be if they did fight. They're, I think they're a little bit past their prime at this point, but if they did fight, it would have been like blockbuster. Sold out. Massive, huge, b- biggest fight in decades, you know? Yeah. Um, just for the, for many reasons. One, because they're two of the top contenders and because they're brothers. You know, it'd be like this grudge match thing. Yeah. But I'm I mean, sure they've been, they've probably been fighting since they could walk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, man, I'm congratulations to andy ruiz and his camp because this is uh it was really fun to watch and i mean he's champ now so good luck champ but um we got some youtube drama don't we oh yeah youtube drama dude i i'm i'm just done with youtube drama for like the rest of the year uh i mean first we had the whole james charles thing with like all right this girl came out this video james charles was canceled James Charles came back with a video, and then he said, no, this is what happened. You know what I mean? He kind of explained himself. People just, like, switch sides. It's just, like, whoever puts the first video out, uh, I think, does the most damage. And then, like, the, the, the person that's being accused of something puts a video out, and then they it is, they, they clear their name. You know what I mean? Um, but, but at the same time, it almost doesn't matter because it's like when a, when a, a paper, like a newspaper, puts out a story. And then turns out they were wrong, and then they print a retraction. It's like, bro, the story already broke. The damage yeah, yeah. has like, been done. Pe- people have been affected, and like they could have gone their way without seeing a second paper. So the damage is done because like like uh, James Charles lost like three million followers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he might have gained them all back, but there's a chance he couldn't have. You know? Um, yeah. But with this story we talked about before, uh, Deji KSI's little brother put out a video saying KSI used to abuse me. He used to hit me. He used to think it was funny. He uh, had sex with this girl I had a crush on, and he just this, this he went on this little like tangent of just hating on his own brother. And yeah. uh, before before this, he had put out several diss tracks, you know. And um, I I felt bad for him just because just being a younger brother, you can kind of relate with him. Mm-hmm. But um, but I don't think I would personally ever put like a diss track out on my brother. I think that's a little like too far, you know. I mean, it is also like stupid, like diss tracks that, like in like 2019 are kind of dumb but um then ksi responds and he says uh no all this is is wrong um he deji had cut out these clips where like his brother would hit him but then ksi played the clips but to the entirety and then deji would laugh and he would laugh it off and then or deji would hit him exactly yeah ksi would hit him and then deji would get to punch him back but he would cut out the part where he punched him back or or like yeah i mean Deji made it seem like, oh, I don't like, I don't like pain, I don't like hurting others. But then KSI would play the video where like he would lose, and then Deji would get to like hit him, you know. So they they both liked it. It's just Deji, I think, got jealous of his brother um, because just a, a, a lot of different things stacked up, I guess, and just made him like tip over the edge. But at the end of the day, KSI, I mean, I, I think I think he pretty much cleared his name. Deji said that he slept with the girl he liked. But then KSI said, like, no, like, this is a girl I met outside of you and me. You know, I went to a concert, I met her, and then, you know, things moved on from there. But I, I, I never knew that you knew who this person was, you know? And I, I think that's fair enough, you know what I mean? Like, what, what's he going to do? Go around asking every girl if he knows his brother? Yeah, I, I think that's ridiculous, too. And there's... <laughs> I think I called this relatively well, not to toot yeah. my own horn, not to toot my own horn, but I was like, look at the similarities here, like between the uh, Tati video, the way it was titled, the way the camera was positioned, the length of the video. I was like, I think there's going to be more that breaks and more yeah. broke. Um, and I so mean, also, I, it's crazy not- how fast everyone reacts to shit like this. 
Exactly. It's so fast. It's just crazy how, and, and including people like Keemstar, you know, Keemstar yeah. included. He in the drama channels, they're going yeah, yeah. like, "Oh fuck KSI, KSI is a piece of shit," and then they go, I, "Oh, I follow him um, on Twitter, and he just goes now. off." Yeah, I. People need to pull their head out of their ass and get all the information before they draw a conclusion. Yeah, and it's just. It's grade school, man. Like, you just get all your information. There's always multiple sides to a story. And the truth is likely somewhere in the middle. Like, I don't think KSI is innocent here. Because I still stand stand by what I said before. I think he's kind of a piece of shit. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, He's he's in the clout house. He's uh, a professional shit talker, basically. He does a lot of reaction videos and just kind of talks shit. And, I mean, he's got to make a living. I respect that. But, I don't know. I just... I don't think he's a, he's probably not someone I would want to hang out with, you know, Mm -hmm. but there's another layer to this in which KSI said he didn't want to monetize the video because he didn't want to make money on his family drama. Right. Yeah. But he said, I'm going to monetize the video, but all the money I make from this video, I'm going to donate it to a charity. And it's like, okay, cool. I hope you actually do it, you know, but he showed footage from the Logan Paul boxing match. And Logan Paul copy striked the video. So all of the revenue that KSI makes that was going to go to this charity, Logan Paul, as far as I know, is going to take it. Well, see, here again, you're reacting to what Keemstar said, right? Yeah. Because then, then, then uh, Logan Paul went on Twitter and said, oh, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, because what Logan Paul was told by his team was, hey, KSI used your footage of your podcast. Should we copyright strike him? So Logan Paul, of course, said, yeah, fuck KSI. But then he, he um, people on Twitter were saying, hey, at the beginning of the video, he says all donations are going to suicide awareness. So then Logan Paul removed the copyright strike. Oh, well, fuck me. Yeah, well, well, I, I mean, just did the same thing that I was saying people shouldn't do. Exactly. like It's it's dangerous. But that's what I hated. Um, that's what I got mad at Keemstar for. Because in the video, and it, Keemstar is very active on Twitter. So he definitely saw that Logan Paul just said that. Um but he, of course, loves to like vilify Logan Paul and Jake Paul. I mean, and not that they're good people, but pretty easy. He, to do. Um, yeah, he, he definitely cut out the part where where he took off the copyright strike after finding out the truth. Yeah, well, good for him. I um, I don't know. It's hard for me to form opinions about a lot of celebrities and YouTubers because I we get to know them by these little bites, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of it is either them being portrayed in the best light possible in their own videos or them yeah. being portrayed in the worst light possible in other people's videos. Yeah. Um, which, again, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would never trust a YouTuber. Um, a lot of YouTubers have come forward and said, and like they, like they say, oh, like when you go to California, because a lot of YouTubers move to California and a lot of them don't. And like the ones that don't, if you listen to what they say, say, oh, if you go to L.A. and like you see and you go to parties, you see a different side to these YouTubers that, like, you love. You know what I mean? They might yeah. put on a show, um, but they're, like, really, like, devious in ways that you couldn't even imagine. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I I would assume that's true, you know? Um, just because, I mean, they're these people who were got famous. So, they, they have first of all, they have a lot of attention when they're young, and they have a lot of money when they're young, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, they're, they're, I mean, you and me have been working since we were able to work, you know? Like, actual yeah. jobs. Um, these people just film themselves and make millions, you know, so that not, not to like shit on them. I mean, they're, they're still doing their job, but they probably see different. They, they probably see, see things in a different light than we do. Yeah, they've never had to, you know, wait to buy um, a tank of gas until payday. You know yeah. what I mean? Or, or I mean, like you and me, like to buy this equipment we just bought, we had to like, you know, like wait, you know, save a little bit of our yeah, paychecks. Yeah, yeah. Buy buying it. this equipment was um, not just like, yeah, fuck it, buy the equipment. Like, yeah, we, exactly. It was a. It was a thing, you know, and um, I'm not saying, oh, we should be rich, too. They're, I mean, they're clearly doing their thing. Yeah, it's yeah, just I, they they are seeing the world through a different lens than we are. Yeah, ex- exactly. Exactly. And I mean, not to shit on every YouTuber. There, there might be some YouTubers out there who have been working at this for a while and they perfected their craft. Um, but I, I just know like a lot of those, like the ones that are on the training page and the ones that are like making the most money are definitely ones that started out young and they've just been making all this money that like their whole from like. 16 or 18 to 20 they've just been yeah. making like millions and uh they just don't see it like the world the same as we do 
or, or mm-hmm. people who have like worked actual jobs. Um, yeah. Which is uh, the lines have to get blurred with this, with like KSI Deji shit because their family drama is being aired out on one some of the largest platforms on YouTube. Yeah. You know, there is no way I would ever do that. I th- think I was yeah, against, dude, I was so kind stupid. of against I was kind of against Deji for his original video because I, partially because I was like, dude, just talk to your brother. Yeah. Dude, if Sit it's down at a kitchen family the, drama, yes. call him. Just go to him. This um, should be discussed would, at a kitchen table, not on YouTube. Yeah, he was definitely just trying to make that money. You know what I mean? I mean, if it actually came out that KSI was being a douche to him his whole life, then yeah, let everyone know that KSI is not a good guy. But then KSI comes down and defends himself, you know? So if you're just trying to make, I mean, he's just trying to make money, you know? Like if there was an actual problem, try to solve it with him. And if it if nothing gets resolved, then I guess you can. Um, let his fans know that he's actually not a good person and that they shouldn't be following him. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that you just trying to make that money because he put out what, like five videos on this, like yeah, in the span and of, like I, a month. Because, and I, the timing, he saw Tati do it. He saw it blow up and then he went, I'm going to do that. That's truly what I think it was. Yeah. I think he said, Oh, Tati made probably like 300 grand off the James Charles stuff. Oh, you know. probably more, dude. She she made like millions off her like vitamins just because she talked about it in her videos. And Face Banks did like a, a video on it, and she made so much money off the vitamins alone. Because because pe- other other YouTubers to defend her, they would they would buy the vitamins and screenshot the shipping information and say like, oh, I stand with her or whatnot. You know what I mean? Just uh, stupid things like that. Um, so just a loan off her vitamins, she made like a lot of money. And then that's not even counting the YouTube revenue or like the subscribers she gained. Um, yeah, that I mean, we, we talked we talked about it before. That was just like such a like strategic attack. Yeah, it's just so catty, man. It's like, are you done with junior high or not? I can't stand drama. Like, I, I, that, that, that's why horrible. I said I, I'm I'm just done with this YouTube drama. Uh, cause it's either fake or it's just so or I don't so care. Stupid. Yeah, it's either fake or I don't or I don't care. I there's no context in which just drama like for like 2 years leading up to this past election, mm-hmm. I just binged politics. Politics, 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 politics. This senator said this. This presidential candidate said this. This person said this. At the end of the day, that's all just drama. It's people yeah. talking shit. And it's yeah. toxic. It's like so a, a step let, below, like, defamation kind of thing. Yeah, but you let that shit into your life, and you just binge that. People talking shit. Yeah. And you can say, oh, it's intellectual. I'm trying to be informed. I'm listening to NPR. I'm listening to what this senator said. Blah, blah, blah. It's just people talking shit. And so I unplugged from politics. I still know what my political views are. Yeah. But... The poli- my, the the politicians are the are it's so fucking toxic, man. Like it, they just talk shit all day. So that's a tangent, just to say that like, if you find yourself just thinking about drama, and you'll you'll start to find yourself creating that situation in your own life. Yeah. You know, if you watch MTV. And shows where people are cheating on each other and treating their kids wrong, or like you're watching some kind of like Daddy of Five YouTube channel where everyone's screaming at each other in the house. Your house is going to end up like that. Eventually. Yeah, I, I I don't see the uh, I don't see the appeal to that. You know what I mean? Because I grew up with like several siblings, so like that my house is just like havoc. But uh, I don't see like why people would want to watch that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I why did... why are you pulling that into your life? Yeah, and that's it, it's part almost of the reason like people, I don't. Go ahead. I was gonna say people are like so maybe their life's just so boring and like uh it's almost like how our generation watches like Twitch streamers you know what I mean we kind of like we kind of like to step into their shoes and see what they see um it's almost like people are just bored and they want to see what like an American family is you know what I mean kind of kind of thing you know what I'm saying like um like well because I'm just like thinking about like the Kardashians or like the Jersey Shore or any MTV show, they kind of want to take a step in their life and then they can unplug later and say, oh, fuck, I'm glad I'm not there. Yeah. Like, um, 
I get that. It's 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 a form of empathy, you know. Yeah. Um, being able to relate with someone's situation, you know, yeah. or or on be interested in someone's situation on some level. But here's we talked about horror movies in a last episode. I can't have that shit partially because it scares me and two because it's like i don't like to bring that energy into my life yeah you know? exactly exactly i don't like to surround myself with negativity like you've heard me say be so positive that negativity doesn't want to be around you yeah. so why would you bring negativity into your life on purpose and watch people get their heads chopped off on tv like i know it's fake but i don't want to watch that i don't really yeah. get the appeal you know yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we had a whole podcast about it, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say in the past five years, there hasn't been a good straight up just horror movie. I mean, they've just all been pretty garbage to me. Yeah, maybe that's directing or acting or maybe people are just wanting something different. But yeah, yeah to bring it around, I wish Deji and KSI both the best. I hope that they can reconcile and have a good relationship. Um, on some level and hopefully they can have it on the level of brotherhood because I wouldn't change the relationship the trade the relationship that I have with my brothers for anything you know yeah and I hope that they aren't just estranged brothers forever because that would be horrible yeah I mean for sure um, yeah but I mean that, that's the best way to wrap it up pretty much uh, first of all I, I hope it's real you know what I mean I hope they're not bullshitting us and just using us as views um, and then second of all, like, yeah, like you said, if it is, if it is indeed true, just like, I hope they can find a way past this. Like, like it, it's going to take like a lot of balls for KSI to forgive him just because like, <laughs> uh, his own brother tried to like smear his name, you know? He, yeah. He literally, he tried to like get him, uh, ruined and he used them to increase his sub count to finally get to 10 million. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that, that's that pretty much. Yeah. For sure. Well, um, we kind of got down on a negative note, but uh, we're going to take a quick break, thank our sponsor, then we're going to come back and talk about some funny, weird news. All right, Matt, welcome back from the break. We've got some weird news for you. What we got? What we do? Dude, this is probably my favorite because this is where the laughs come in. I'm considering just like just doing weird news because it's the most fun. <laughs> just a weird news podcast. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's just what it would be called, the weird news podcast. So get this. Houston school bus driver charged with DWI blames it on a bad donut. Uh, <laughs> uh, DWI is driving without license, right? Driving while intoxicated. Oh. So, Ooh. I'm not going to say her name. Uh, bus driver was charged wa with driving while intoxicated after police say she failed a field sobriety test miserably, in quotes, when they pulled her over in Spring, Texas on Thursday afternoon. So, I don't think she was in her bus. I was thinking she was in the bus. Anyway, she posted a $100 bond and was released from Harris County Jail on Friday. She says, my stomach was just hurting so bad that a wheel fell off the thing on the curb. That's all it was. And going 45 miles per hour, it's just going to whip back. What? Her, I don't know what she's saying. What? Yeah. When, what does that mean? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one person said, oh, she was in her bus. The bus swerved onto the left shoulder on a road, hitting a divider before veering back. So she's swerving around the road and hit a highway divider, right? And then she, when asked about her field sobriety test, she says, why'd you fail? And she says, because it's hard. I mean, I couldn't even do it right now. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. So, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, so the whole donut thing's a lie, right? Well, I'm thinking donut meaning like a tire. Oh. I don't see anything about a sweet breakfast treat. Well. And Right underneath the picture, it says uh, she blamed her bad driving on an upset stomach caused by a donut. Oh, okay, but it's not anywhere else in the freaking article. Well, I, I'm I'm she, guessing that was like she she okay. probably told the officer that so she wouldn't get uh, like sobriety tested. But this brings up another great point. I've always wondered. All right, have you ever been in traffic 
and like I mean like in deep traffic where it's like okay like I, I'm gonna be late to wherever I'm going I'm gonna be late yeah. um and then have you ever been like oh I gotta take a big dump right now like it like it's it's coming out now and you mix those two together right let's yeah. say you're in traffic what do you do I've always I've I, never I, done I, this I thank shit. God every day I, I, I uh I thank God every day that this hasn't happened to me but I've always wondered what do you do in that scenario do you pull over to the curb do you just in your car you know grab a bag or something but dude this has been like my biggest fear i've never had to shit like that but i have had to piss like that exactly i, I mean either or either and or. i keep I, I mean, I I think like i'm, I'm fucking ser- i'm serious i keep a gatorade bottle in my car see that that's a great backup plan i just do and yeah i mean it's in the passenger seat floorboard most of the time so i can just reach down and most people there's only a few people that know that about me. But, <laughs> and now everyone does. And now everybody does, but they don't know who I am because I'm, I'm Spike. I have a mask on. But I'm serious. Like, I, okay, I shit you not. In my daily driver car, especially in the wintertime, I have a candle, a lighter, a jar of peanut butter, a blanket, a coat, and a Gatorade bottle all the time. So if I crash and I have to survive like overnight or for multiple days, I can stay warm with the candle, you know, because mm-hmm. a candle is enough to heat the cab of a car oh, yeah, enough for sure. to keep you alive. Yeah. But by the way, you have to leave a window cracked or something with the candle. Otherwise, it'll fill the it'll bur- you can get carbon monoxide issues. Um, but anyway, I just have that shit in my car so i can survive and i have a reflector vest too so if i have to get out and change a tire or something oh yeah yeah so do i i mean i, I just like you I, I keep like a blanket a lighter and uh a, like a reflector vest um th- during the winter of course but uh yeah I, I think everyone should dude you should just we should start carrying like a, a couple of depends so if we have to shit we just, <laughs> just well, shit in them wait are those diapers yeah yeah they're adult oh, diapers oh shit dude. I've never heard that. Depend? Depends, bro. Because you're depending on the... No, I've never heard of them. Yeah, they're like like adult adult diapers. diapers. And like they're... (laughs) You know how when you buy underwear, there's always like a model on the front? Like smiling. smiling, And they're in their underwear. Will do it on there? Yeah, it'll be like someone in their 60s. Be like, yo. (laughs) (laughs) Or it'll be... what it is. Or sometimes it'll be, like, the same dude that does the Calvin Klein stuff. Like, the dude with, like, perfect hair and abs and shit. Wearing Depends. Nice, dude. You're like, I wonder how much they pay that fucking guy. Well, it's just funny because you know his friends are like, oh, shit, it's you. Look. And they send him pictures all the time, like, at Walmart or something. Or, you know, like, during the shoot, he's like, I'm at the pinnacle of my modeling career right now. I mean, either that or he's like, this is just a step, baby. Next week, Calvin Klein. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. What if, like, the Depends ad is the one that they all aspire to get? Because it's... This guy's like, this is it. This made is, it. This is, <laughs> this is a, a 10-year contract. And they're like, no, man, this is the one-day shoot. But it's 40 grand. <laughs> but it's, oh, shit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, next time I eat a bad donut, I'm not going to crash into a highway divider, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how a donut can be bad. Like, what, you know, what, yeah. what would make a dough? Like, is it raw dough, I guess? I don't know. Something that would call well, you Oh, they make a lot of them with eggs. So, like, what if the eggs were bad? Oh, this is clearly okay. just a woman that was intoxicated. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Trying sure. Try to get out of a ticket or something. I hope there weren't kids in that bus, man. I I don't think so, or else she... Oh, shoot. Yep, it's a Houston bus driver who authorities say drove board. drunk with children on board. That Ooh. bitch. Dude, I mean, has anyone ever had a good bus driver growing up? Like, I don't know. A I had an old citizen I, abiding bus driver. When I was growing up, um, from when I was like first grade to seventh grade ish, I lived out in the country. You had to like turn on like three gravel roads to get to my house, which was on a gravel road, you know? Yeah. And my bus driver was literally my neighbor across the street. Like, I could throw a rock from my yard into his yard, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was the first one on his stop he picked up in the morning and the last one off. So I was on the bus for, like, three hours a day combined, you know? Yeah. And I would have to get up for this fucking guy. And he would pick us up at 6. 
literally at 6 a.m. he would pick us wow. up. So, I mean, a first grader, I'm getting up at like 5.30 every day. And my parents wondered why I hated school. You know? <laughs> yeah. But this guy was an old salty farmer. Like he was, um, that's what he did. He was a farmer. He farmed wheat and stuff. So I'm assuming he just drove the bus for health insurance. But he was a cool guy. His name was Wayne. Well, I'm glad you had a nice bus driver. My bus driver was a fucking douchebag. All right, so my parents were like, all right, you know what? We're done with the bus. Well, I'll just pick you up and drop you off. But one day, go. they both get, like, held up in traffic, and they're like, okay, I'm going to be an hour. And I was like, you know what? I used to ride the bus. The bus driver knows me. Maybe I can uh, sneak on and, you know, get a free ride. Because uh, my, my best friend in middle school, he lived, like, right next door to me. Um, so I, so, so like the, the, the stop was like right by my house. So I sneak on, he sees me get on and then we're halfway to my drop off and he sees me in the back talking with my friend and he says, Whoa, Hey, you're, you're not on the bus list anymore. And he turns the bus around and drives me back to school and leaves me there. What an asshole. Yeah. Everyone was like, Whoa, dude, you're. Every, like everyone there was like, "Hey, you're you're halfway there." You know what I mean? Why and not? De just... He's delaying dropping everybody else. Exactly, off too. exactly. He went out of his way to just fuck me over, and uh, cause I, that happened in middle school like a while ago. So I, I always think back on this, and I was like, "No, I wasn't wrong." I was like, "Dude, just let me." I, I, the only thing I can like justify is like maybe he thought I was trying to. I mean, like he, he yeah, I don't even know. You know. Well, what I mean? about when like what about when kids are wanting to have a friend over and the friend rides the bus home with them? Do they have exactly. to call and get on the bus list for one day? I, I mean, I would assume so, but, like, this guy knew me. You know what I mean? I rode the bus the, my, like the, the whole seventh grade year. You know what I mean? It was just eighth grade year where my parents were like, all right, I, we'll pick you up. So he knew me. And, uh, yeah, I, I, he just went out of his way to do this. What a douche, man. Like, yeah, like we, we were, like, miles out. You know what I mean? Like, we were, like, halfway there, and he just said, nope. Yeah, I rode the bus a little bit, but then – when my brothers got of driving age, which was yeah. around around that seventh grade mark, like I was saying, I got to ride with them. And that was cool. Because I'm like with my bros, <laughs> listening to Johnny Dare in the morning. Hell yeah. yeah. That was fun, man. For those of you that don't know, Johnny Dare is a DJ in the Kansas City area. Uh, he's like a, rock, a shock jock morning rock DJ. Yeah. But... And I don't think he's funny anymore. But at the time. <laughs> but as a great. little kid, he was the best. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Hell yeah. The bus is terrifying, though, man. Like, there's some bad shit that goes on on the bus. Yeah. You, I mean, I used to remember, like, when I was younger, there was that video of, like, the bus driver just gets pissed at the kids yelling. So he goes around and starts beating the shit out of kids. <laughs> he starts throwing haymakers. Yeah, but I know, know I, as, as, a, as a dad, I would find that bus driver and beat the shit out of him. Right, like, and as and people get or people make eyes at me or make eyes at me. People like give me weird looks when I say I want to homeschool or I'm considering homeschooling. But like, schools are getting shot up, teachers are going crazy, bus drivers are beating the shit out of people. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why is I mean... it so weird? Why why are people <laughs> why are people so against homeschooling? And I know that. Well, People are just so, against so, things that are abnormal, I guess. And I mean, not, not it's not abnormal, but I mean uh, against the norm. You know, what I mean, if it's not yeah. if it's not like straight by the book normal, they they're gonna question you, just because I don't know they got nothing better to do. Yeah, and like there's homeschooling now is especially with social media is such it's way better than it used to be because there's like homeschooling groups that meet up every like twice a week, you know. Yeah. For that social aspect of it. And like I'm my wife and I both, we are strongly considering homeschooling. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I, I think uh, if you guys are both like uh, able, you know, what I mean, have a time in the day to 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 teach him. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Well, and, mean, and then he, he would skip all like the the bullshit, having to wake up super early and like homeroom, you know? Yeah. Just everything that like just like, you know, you I mean, you know. Just the bullshit yeah. that goes on at school. Like all of the, having to skip all, all that. Well, school is essentially daycare. It's state yeah. funded. It's state funded oh, yeah. daycare. Because think about all the hours you were in school that you weren't learning a fucking thing. Yeah. Like in reality, school should be like three hours a day. 
Oh, yeah. I, I mean, math I mean, maybe science not, history maybe not that. See you later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say more like five hours, you know what I mean? Just to like make sure, like, I mean, like, that's kind of extracurricular and whatnot. But uh, yeah, definitely not eight hours. That's crazy. Yeah, like, or or seven hours, kids, eight or seven. Why are kids literally learning how to play in PE? Your parents should do that. Why are we paying I mean, people to teach kids how to that play? That should be sports. I mean, there's a lot of kids growing up who just hate PE. You know what I mean? They hate it. They try to get out of it. Um, I would just or say, like if, the fat girls sports, that would just stand in the outfield. Yeah, I mean, if it, I would say if you want to do sports, tell your parents, or or maybe like do PE from like grades one through three. You know what I mean? And then like, oh, if you like it, keep doing it. You know what I mean? We have these kind of sports available. If you don't like it, then you don't have to do it anymore. You know? Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Because like in high school, like when you're a senior, you take like three PE classes and like yeah, because you're that's fucking it, done. You know? You're yeah, done with it. You're done. Instead of that, just give us like, let us go home. Yeah, I took two PE. I took a PE, a strength and conditioning. I had a homeroom, and I was like an office aide. Yeah. I was so doing like, fuck all. So, so like half your day was just nothing. Just yeah, nothing. literally nothing. And it, it was just there so I could be on campus enough for sports. Yeah. And then I had like my two or three, my only classes. I was taking like two or three AP classes for college credit. Because I was literally done with high school. And then not just that, like the last semester, senior year, they're just telling you, all right, study for the final. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. whole semester is nothing. Just study for the final. Here's a study guide. Study it. And that's most classes. There's not like any lessons being taught or anything. It's just people like, here's a study guide. I remember the feeling like the last week or last uh, maybe month of senior year and how everyone just lost their ability to give a shit. Yeah, dude, the senioritis just hit yeah, you like and a bus. Everybody was like, it, people were literally like walking out of class 10 minutes early. And they're like, I don't yeah. fucking care. You I mean, know? at that point, you've gone there for four years, you know what I mean? So you, you know the teachers, and like a lot of teachers were really cool. Like, yeah. like hey, can I go out to the lunchroom and grab like a drink before class? And he's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. What a job. Um, I would never be a teacher. Of like, I think, because to the point of homeschooling, like, let's say, for in my house, it's a, a team of two parents, you know? Yeah. Both, both of us have – I am almost done with my bachelor's degree. Yeah. My wife is almost done with her associate's degree. So we both have some college education. We're both high school educated, right? I, after I complete my bachelor's, I will be going into my MBA. So we have enough college experience to probably aggregately put our – eggs in one basket and be about as qualified as a bachelor's degree teacher you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. and we would be teaching one maybe two kids if we have another one you know what i'm saying yeah. so that's a pair a team of two with two kids now you compare that to a teacher that's in a fucking room full of 25 kids so it's yeah. one one teacher for 25 students like how much attention are those students getting you know, mm -hmm. but but that 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 to me, what that says is that that would make me um, that make me want to be a teacher because like just knowing that that would make you want to go out of your way to make sure everyone's kind of like understanding, you know, um, because there's a lot of shitty teachers out there. But on the flip side, I've had some great teachers who have been like, hey, like, are you all right? You know what I mean? Like, do you need to like, do you need any help? Do you need like any after school tutoring? Like. Instead of them like scorning you and saying like, mm -hmm. oh, like why are you fucking up? You know what I mean? Or like, or like, there were teachers that like make fun of you in class and be like, oh, look, Jimmy forgot his homework again. You know, there was a lot yeah. of teachers out there that were just like hooking it up, and they were like, hey, you good? Or they were just well, like, think about all of the teachers you've had. You know, yeah. like you, you're a little bit younger than me, so you're closer to school than I am. Yeah. But think about all the teachers from preschool, if you can remember it, kindergarten, first grade, all the way up to senior year, right? So 12 to 13 years plus. Yeah. And then think about all the teachers that you can comfortably say actually left a lasting impression and really taught you something. Yeah, I would say- For me, like a, it's like, I like can count them on one hand. Yeah, I, I'm saying like five, five at most that have like yeah. left like a lasting impact on my life that, like, so that how, I think about to this day. Yeah, so then how many- shitty teachers did you have oh you know, dude so it's many so, so lopsided many. man like there I, are way more shitty teachers than good ones 
I've always said, like, I mean, there, there's teachers that are, like, older and, like, they're, like, in their 60s that do still give a fuck. And, mm-hmm. like, those are, like, a lot of the ones that left impacts on me. But, like, there's a lot of teachers that, like, after five years of teaching, they're just, like, fuck this. You know what I mean? Nothing's going to change <laughs> either way. Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to see this guy in five years, so I don't care. There's a lot of those teachers out there, and those. I bet suck. it's way. I bet it's way harder in like an inner city school where you see kids that are getting shot. Or you, know? you see like kids who get in fights, and then like the teacher jumps in the middle and he gets knocked out. Yeah, fuck that, man. And then I mean, with all people are suing everybody for more and more stuff now. So like, kids get in a fight, teacher goes in and pulls them apart, and then parents are like, "Don't put your hands on my kid." Yeah. Like what? I, I always see this picture. It's like, oh, uh, schools back then, and, like, it's a teacher with, like, your parents by their side saying, why don't you do your homework? And it's, like, schools now. And it's, like, the parents behind the kid. It's, like, why are you stressing my kid out giving him anxiety? Yeah. He should just be able to play Fortnite all yeah. the time. Well, we kind of went off that weird news topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I mean. It was organic, it, it, though. It's, it's fine. Cool. Yeah, it, it was nice. I mean, like. I'm sure a lot of people can, like, um, relate with that. You know what I mean? There's we should been... have a teacher on and talk to him about it. Yeah. That'd be cool. Sure. And, like, I will asking... say that we uh, there's a guest that is going to come on just trying to nail it down on when. But this person worked for over 25 years in maximum security correctional facilities. Like that's, prison. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, prison. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's what correctional facility means, folks. (laughs) (laughs) But um, some of the stories that I've heard out of this person is like, what? No. He's like, oh, yeah. So I'm like, dude, you got to come on. And he's like, when can we do it? So we're just trying to work out the when and the where. But I'm stoked for that episode. Yeah, I mean, you told me a lot of these stories and a lot of them are like these awesome, like, could be movie stories. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any of them independently could be exactly movie. they could all be your movies like yeah and like they're great yeah so i'm excited for this yeah so i got i got another uh weird news for you ming hit me let me open this up all right <laughs> i love the title it's just so straightforward two men die trying to jump car over open drawbridge <laughs> lit lit so have you seen Too Fast, Too Furious? Of course. In the beginning when they're like, yo, Paul Walker's here. Let's jump this drawbridge, bro. <laughs> yep. These guys, I am 100% sure, saw that movie. So, Louisiana State Police say it happened shortly after 2 a.m. Friday, south of Lake Charles, and they say the bridge was closed to traffic to let a boat pass through on a waterway. So if you haven't seen this before, if a boat's really tall and it can't get under the bridge, some of the bridges will be drawbridges and they'll open the bridge up and they'll lift it up. Boat will go through and they'll put it back down, open the road back up, you know? Yeah. Pretty inefficient. I'm thinking like, just build the fucking bridge taller. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what is, what's driving through there? Like a giant pirate ship with super tall masts? <laughs> I don't know. Witnesses yeah. say that the car's passengers pushed the gate arm up and drove a 2016 Chevy Cruze. No. Uh, yeah. You did, You picked a bad car to try this. Yeah, guys. yeah. At least but that's the best Chevy. Com- Dude, if they would have made it, that would have been the best Chevy commercial ever. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been like, we want you next week. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Out of all this, rest in peace, those guys, you know what I mean? They were here for a good time, not a long time. Yeah, but yeah. uh, That's true. But damn, dude. A 23-year-old and a 32-year-old. Wow. Went out in a blaze of glory, man. But now, just... now, do you think, yeah. could you make that, you think, like in any other car? I don't know. It, I don't know how wide the gap was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, now, here's what I'm wondering. Some drawbridges will, there's a break in the middle. I think, this is likely most of them, excuse me. This is likely most of them. But there's a break in the middle of the bridge, and each side will come up towards each bank, you know? So there's a gap in the middle. I wonder if there are drawbridges out there that the whole bridge comes up to one side, so it's like a really long ramp. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah, but, this okay. one looks like a short little bridge, you know what I mean? 
Well, so think about if they jump it and they just miss it and they hit like the end of the bridge. Ooh. Or did they miss it completely and not I'll... hit any, anything and then go right into the water? That's what I'm guessing. I think they just fucking whoosh, fucking flipped over, became like incapacitated. Yeah, cuz if you're if you're falling in a car like that, it's probably and it hits the water, it's probably going to be like hitting a wall. Also you know? like deploying the airbags and whatnot. Yeah, and it's going to knock dude. the shit out of you. Yeah, the car's like the tops just like dented. So that they must have fell like top down, you know? Oh yeah, this is not a big bridge. It's like tiny. Dude, I bet you they hit the they totally hit the other end of the bridge then. Yeah. Because it's not very tall. That's fucking crazy. Fuck it, dude. I'll try it. Not on a Chevy would, Cruise. Yeah, I would try like on like a maybe a faster car and uh I would want like I would want runway. like a Dude, I, the exact vehicle I would want is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Hellcat. It's an it's a like an SUV. You can put some big tires on it, and it's got that 700 horsepower engine in it. That Hellcat. That's what I was thinking. Like something with big wheels. Yeah. Jump that baby. You gotta have an SUV, sucker. dude. I was thinking the car from uh, Dukes of Hazards. A Charger. Yeah, but like the dude. exact. I want the exact car. The General Lee one, and you can yep. when you jump. Oh yeah. For sure. They're, oh, they got like a, an employee talking about it, and he's got his glasses on with like a little strap on the back. You know. He's I'll tell you what, boy. <laughs> they tell just you what, about they flew, made it. And they died. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that sucks, dude. What a way to go. You know that, that year charger, I think it's a 73 that they used for the Dukes of Hazard movies? They're yeah. so rare because they crashed so many of them, making those. Uh, that TV series. Yeah. They bought like all of them <laughs> and <they> crashed <laughs> them all. <laughs> We're gonna need some of these. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know when I was younger, I went to the car shows and they always had that car there all the time. I wonder if it was the same guy that was just at every show. Oh, I think so. I think so. I mean, that, that's like his one claim to fame. Yeah, like if you're at local shows, it'll be a lot of them will be the same car. Mm-hmm. Do, do they pay you to bring a car, or do you pay them to show off your car? You probably, like, pay an entry fee, and then if you win, you get, a, like, prize money. Nice. Oh, yeah, because it is a show. It, like, it is, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you pay an entry fee, and then, like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're running out of time, man. You got anything funny? Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? The end of the podcast.